People hang out along railroad tracks for a lot of different reasons. For me though, it's all about botany. Today, I'm on the search for one of the most toxic plants in the world. Its name is poison hemlock, and to say that it grows in abundance around here is an understatement. This habitat is teeming with poison hemlock. And that's not too bad of a thing for us because poison hemlock is the star of today's video. It's right over there, and summer is the perfect time to observe poison hemlock in eastern North America because we can easily see its conspicuous flowers. So let's take a few steps that way and talk about poison hemlock some more. I live in the beautiful land of western Pennsylvania. Poison hemlock lives here too. Because poison hemlock is a resident of the Keystone State, it only makes sense that everyone else who lives here becomes very familiar with this plant. But even if you don't live in Pennsylvania, that's okay. Poison hemlock is now naturalized in almost every single state in the United States, though it was traditionally confined to Europe, Western Asia, and North Africa. Poison hemlock is a biennial member of the carrot family, and it can easily be recognized during the late spring, early summer season by its tall stature and by its flowering, then fruiting structures. So right now we can easily see the flowers, which are born in clusters known as umbels. The individual flowers are small and white, and if you look under the flowers, you will see the characteristic lance-shaped bracts. The compound leaves of poison hemlock are divided many times and are very lacy and fern-like. The stem of poison hemlock is smooth, it usually has a whitish bloom, and it contains purple splotching, which are all important diagnostic features for this species. Now what does poison hemlock do to humans? Well, it doesn't do anything, unless you physically interact with the plant. But if you do physically interact with the plant, more specifically if you ingest it, then it'll mess you up really bad. So don't eat poison hemlock. There's a reason that poison is in its name. Poison hemlock is one of the most toxic plants in the world. Perhaps you heard that poison hemlock was the lethal poison that Socrates was condemned to drink in ancient Greece. And of course, we all know how that ended up. So poison hemlock contains compounds known as alkaloids. That's not too surprising. Alkaloids are ubiquitous in the plant kingdom. However, at least five of the alkaloids present in poison hemlock are toxic to humans. Their concentrations in different parts of the plant at different times of the year can vary. And while every single part of poison hemlock is toxic, the highest concentration of alkaloids are found in the seeds. We know what poison hemlock does to the human body because there are numerous reports in the scientific literature documenting cases of human ingestion. And in almost all cases, people think they're eating one plant, usually an edible parsley-like relative, when in fact they're eating poison hemlock. So the toxic alkaloids in poison hemlock have extreme nicotine-like effects on the body, specifically on the central nervous system usually within an hour of ingestion. Initial symptoms include headaches and loss of muscle control, followed by increased salivation, rapid heartbeat, and dilation of pupils. In some individuals, muscle paralysis, a slowing down of the central nervous system, and a low heart rate occur. Rhabdomyolysis, which is the breakdown of muscle tissue and the leaking of its contents into the bloodstream, and eventually kidney failure are additional symptoms. In almost all cases, affected individuals experience paralysis of their legs, and although higher neurological functions like consciousness, speech, and cognition are preserved until the end, death, which is not an unlikely outcome, is usually the result of respiratory failure and paralysis of the respiratory muscles. Now, quite a few papers documenting the cases of poison hemlock ingestion and intoxication can be accessed. One from the Medical Journal of Australia described two men that had consumed large amounts of alcohol the previous night. They were observed going out after midnight and returning an hour later carrying a quantity of green vegetable matter. They were seen boiling this leaf matter in a pot full of water and then were not seen from about 2.30 a.m. until their discovery at 10 a.m. Well, both men were dead by 10 a.m. and a toxicological examination confirmed the presence of alkaloids from poison hemlock in their bodies. The same paper reported an incident involving a three-year-old boy and his peers who ate what they called carrot weed, but it was in fact poison hemlock. The three-year-old boy consumed a quantity of leaf material while the other children spat out the leaves. About 15 minutes after consuming the weed, the three-year-old boy was restrained in an upright child car seat where after 10 minutes he was noted to be sleeping. One hour and 10 minutes after consuming the leaves, he appeared to wake and then to fall asleep again 90 minutes later, the child was found dead. 
But not all cases end up in death, and actually a lot of them don't. One paper described an incident involving a six-year-old girl who ate what she thought was parsley from her garden, but it was in fact poison hemlock. Two hours later, she was admitted to the hospital with classic signs of poison hemlock toxicity. But luckily after intensive treatment, she was discharged from the hospital three days later with full recovery. Now it's reported that touching poison hemlock can lead to serious skin irritation in some susceptible individuals, but I think I'll be all right. And that inhalation of the vapors after burning poison hemlock can cause serious issues. It's interesting to objectively note, however, that the poison in poison hemlock may be in the dose, but that the line between therapeutic and toxic levels is razor thin. Poison hemlock has been traditionally applied externally to treat herpes and tumors. The dried fresh seeds of poison hemlock have been used for their sedative, pain relieving, and antispasmodic properties. And it's really fascinating to read that the juice and the dried leaves of poison hemlock were listed in 19th and early 20th century European pharmacopoeias. But as I said, the line between therapy and toxicity is incredibly thin, and poison hemlock remains one of the most toxic plants in the world. Still, as a longtime resident of the ecosystems we frequent the most, this plant is certainly worthy of our attention and of our learning, and I encourage you to learn its key identifying features so that you could positively identify this plant when you see it. And if nothing else, perhaps poison hemlock will give you a better reason to hang out along railroad tracks in the middle of summer, a reason I'm sure some cops would understand. Thanks so much for watching this video, I truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. I also encourage you to head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter, and if you're on social media, feel free to give Learn Your Land a follow on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you in the next video.